Hello and welcome to my channel Flores Patch. This video is going to be a tutorial of my favorite rose. It is called Souvenir du Dr. Jamin. And if you want to find out more about this rose, I have a blog post on my website. I will put the link in the description box below about the history of what it is called Souvenir du Dr. Jamin, who was Dr. Jamin and what he did to deserve to have such a beautiful rose named after him. The tutorial is going to be in three parts. The first part is going to be the drawing. The second part is going to be the selection of colors and painting the shadows. And the third and last part will be painting the colors. And the particular challenge of this rose is to paint very dark colors without getting very heavy with it. Let's get started. I decided to paint the rose from the top to see the whole array of petals and then some foliage behind. So the first thing I did was just to decide what size I wanted my rose and I just did a circle with a compass and then I did another one closer to the center and then another one randomly in between. And this is to allow me to keep track of what I'm doing. The overall shape will be this size, so you can see compared to my hand, it is quite large. It's much, much bigger than the actual rose, but I think this rose is so beautiful, it deserves the impact, and I think it will look really nice um, to do it bigger. And then I will add some foliage behind as well to sort of set it off. So now that I have this rough guide of um, a large circle, I'm not going to finish every petal on that circle. It's not It's not going to be the shape of my rose. It's just a very loose shape so that I don't get off track. You know, like, um, yeah, like a, like a guide, just so that I don't end up with a petal over here. So if you've watched my other videos, my other tutorials, you know that I like to start with a very rough drawing to keep it quite loose before I go in with the detail. So I've got this new pencil here called Versatile by Kohinoor and it's very, very thick and I've never used it before. These are the leads for it and they are 4B in, um, in a range of different colors. So the one I have in it at the moment is just a normal gray. All my petals are gonna start at this point, this is my anchoring point. So this is the center of the rose and if I were to flip the rose and look at the back of it, this is where the receptacle would join all the petals, where the sepals are and where the rose hip is gonna be later on. So every single petal, however far it is, however big it is, will have to join here and the central vein will have to join in that direction. I can't suddenly do a petal going like this. This central vein will have to join here. So that's my anchoring point and this is where I'm gonna start with in the center. So in the center of that rose, there is an area which is completely black where you can't see anything at all because all the petals are layered over the top of it. I've got one here which is this sort of shape which has creases in it. I mustn't forget the creases, so I'm gonna put them on quite early on, very loosely again. At this stage I'm not I'm not trying to look for detail, I'm just trying to look for the general shape of the petals. What they're doing generally. So that shape here is created by a petal. That's like this. And one here and one going across here that disappears bit behind this. Then it's just reappearing here and then there's a big cup one. Then there's one 
twirling here, which is quite nice. Does that typical rose petal thing where they turn they turn back and the sexual vein would be here. It's it's quite useful to put to put in a central vein because on each side of a of a central vein the petals are usually more or less symmetrical so it it leaves it helps you to keep things in balance generally. And I'm not looking particularly for accuracy here. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to start doing one petal like this because it wouldn't be like that. But I'm just placing them roughly and I will go back and refine that later. I've got to erase that silly petal over there because I'm going to end up getting confused with it. Right, so that's the rough shape of my rose. And I'm going to add some foliage and then I will go back in and start erasing bits and refining it. Okay, so I've moved my paper so that the foliage here is in the center of the page. The first bit is um, a short stalk that comes out here and it's got a leaf going that way, which comes out here. And here and I'm gonna I'm gonna cut I'm gonna frame it here so there's not gonna be that much foliage the mount is gonna come up to here because I really want the rose to be the focus not the foliage and then the other one see I need to do it higher than that so that the other one comes here yeah. That makes a nice shape going away from the rose. And it's slightly serrated, not that much. It also doesn't have any forms, which is very kind for a rose. That's better. So that line was too far off and then that's the main stalk here and here is a very big leaf now I don't want this to touch us like this because it creates too much of a focus point so I'm gonna make this one overlap more so that I lose that bit here and this one goes underneath that is much better composition wise now the veins the veins on a rose I've got that structure called anastomosing but on this we won't see it that much because Oh yeah, we'll see it here. It means that each vein like this turn back, turns back on itself to join the next one. Now here we won't see it so much because it would do this over here, but I'm going to cut through it. This is going right off the frame. And here on the top, it goes that way that kind of disappears into the light. It's a big highlight here. And 
and then on this side we're going to be able to see a little bit more like this and on this one we won't see it at all because most of that leaf is missing there we go that's it for that side okay so I will zoom out to show you the drawing, a very messy drawing. First impression of that rose. Now I will go in with a rubber and I will start tidying all these lines, just making sure that my angles are alright and tidying all the sort of building site lines that I have everywhere. So I've been tidying up all my lines and um, doing a little bit of tone, not as a tone study yet, but just so I wouldn't get lost because it is quite a complicated drawing, especially in the center. So when there was a big area of shadow, I've put it in more as a landmark rather than a tone study at this stage. And now I'm working sort of the directions, the main directions of the vein again so that when I come to painting I can follow that in case the flower itself has moved, which it will, they always do. I'm not doing a full tone study at the moment because I want to trace it before that happens because once it's covered with all these little dark patches it's actually going to be quite tough to find my line and trace it properly. So these are landmarks that I put into not get lost but this is not yet a tone study. Now the plant as it is in front of me, I'm happy with that foliage here going to the corner. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that one. That one, however, I don't think that looks particularly good. It's too much in line with this one. And it just stands up like this. I think it looks a bit awkward. So this leaf I am going to move. And I'm just going to move at a different angle, sort of here. So I'm just going to pivot that. So it would be still overlapping this one. but going to that sort of angle instead. I mean, that's much nicer. And then as it keeps on going here, there is another one. The main, the main stalk is here. This comes off that stalk behind here. This comes off that stalk behind here. But there, there is another leaf going along here. But like I said before, there's going to be a mount here, so I'm not going to see very much of that. I am now happy with the composition of my rose here, the leaves coming on the side. I've pivoted this one to go like this. I've done the turn here. I might frame it here, I might frame it here. This is something that I can decide later on. So I've put the tracing paper down and I am ready to trace it and I'm doing this before I do the tone study so that I have a line as easy as possible to follow. Once the tone is on there it's going to become even more confused. I'm not going to show you all of that because it's pretty boring. It's just me going over a line that I've done before. See you later! Okay, so I have now transferred my drawing to watercolour paper. This is Saunders Waterford Extra White 640 grams hot pressed. Because it's the 640, um, it does have some texture to it, but I think that will do very nicely for a velvety rose. I have used a colored pencil to transfer, and I have done a separate video on how to transfer a drawing to watercolor paper. I will put a link in the box below if you don't know how to do that. And I am now ready for 
a tone study on the original drawing. When you start the tone study, be careful not to get carried away and do it on your watercolor paper because this is the watercolor paper. You only want watercolor on this. You don't want any graphite. So the tone study will happen on the original sketch. For this, I'm gonna use this pencil, which is a Derwent sketching called Dark Wash. It's an 8B and you can water it, which I quite like for a tone study because when you water it after you've done it, you can sort of do some gradation of tone, which is usually useful. So let's put some shadow on here. My light is coming from here. That's my little sun. So the light is going to come from here. But because this is flat on, um, it's going to be more sort of here. Like if you think, got chestnut here, very handy. That's my chestnut sun. The light wouldn't be flat on this way because I'm going to lit behind here. So I'm going to put my light sort of here and then the light's going to come like this. So you have to keep that in mind as you do your shadows. So there are some areas in here that are extremely dark. So I'm going to start putting this in and I'm going to accelerate the footage so that you don't have to watch half an hour of this. Just me doing little patches of dark. And I'm not trying to be neat. Um, at this stage, the neat part will come on the watercolor paper, not, not on this. This is a working sketch, it's not a finished painting. And if you hear some loud snoring in the background, I'm very sorry about that. It's Penelope, my rabbit. She absolutely loves when I shoot videos because she knows I'm going to be here for a while working. So she just has a very contented snooze and she snores. She's very ladylike when she's awake, but as soon as she falls asleep, that's another story. She snores like a rhinoceros. And if you've ever been in a zoo at night when nobody's around and it's all quiet, you will understand the reference. Never heard anything like it. The dark wash pencil is finished and you can see why I wouldn't do that on my watercolor paper. And now I'm using a very big brush to wet it for more gradation and also to soften the shadows a little bit so they're easier to read. This is also the reason why I do my tracing before I do my shadow is because once the shadows are on it's harder to see the lines it would make tracing a bit tricky I will put a link to that pencil in the description box below if you don't have one but if you don't have one and you don't want one you can just keep it as pencil just um, well I'm going to follow that map and I've got to read it to put the shadows on my watercolour paper. I found it easier to read when, when it's been washed. The tone study is now done, so the next step will be to select the colours for the shadow mix and for the rose itself. But that will be for the next step in the next video. Thank you for watching. If you liked my video, please like and subscribe. It's completely free to do so and it helps me out a lot. The more people subscribe, the more videos I can make. 
I'll see you soon for part two. Thank you. Bye.